Hi everybody! Thanks for watching the Dragonfly Ginger Inspirational Storytelling Channel, where we love to put fun into our dysfunction. If you would like to share your story too, please email us at dragonflygingerstory at gmail.com with recorded version. We here recognize that we're all in this together, and together we will thrive. So welcome to my Bedroom Closet Podcast. Let's get started. Today's podcast is Addiction versus COVID-19. And now that I've dug in and done some research on it, I realize this is just going to be round one of, I don't know how many rounds on this topic there will be, but it's pretty extensive. And the direction that I thought I was going to be taking on this turned to be quite different. And since I am new to podcasting and currently only have 14 subscribers, and I am currently employed right now um, with a lawn care and landscape service, and that's kind of kicking my butt, um, my time to invest into this is kind of shortened greatly. So what I decided to do was um, with only 14 subscribers and no shared stories and I had asked a couple friends if I could interview and they gracefully passed, understandably so, because this is like a touchy sub subject, like it's kind of scary to make yourself so vulnerable. But um, I'm going to use this as practice grounds and we are all in this together. We're, we're going to grow in this together. And um, I feed off you as much as you feed off me. So what I'm going to do is read a blog that I wrote on this topic. And it'll give me the practice of recording since I'm new to podcasting and doing it out of this wonderful bedroom closet. Um, because the sound quality is good. I have to work on lighting still, as you can see. But hey. We're all in this together, one step at a time, right? So let's put some fun into my dysfunction today. And here's to my crazy story. <clears throat> Addiction versus COVID-19, round one. My mind races so fast, I quit trying to keep up with all my thoughts and psychic predictions of these historic times. Oddly, it's in times like this that I thrive. I think it's because I have had my ass kicked pretty hard many times over now that it becomes a running joke for me, my friends, and my family. This ass kicking we're all in right now together has scared me very little. I feel like I already know what to expect from it and I clearly see what I can do to minimize my own fallout. Or my ego has gotten the best of me. I guess time will tell. I used to think my ass kickings were all self-induced and I talked quite abusively to myself inside my head. On the outside, my feelings would present themselves as a good time party girl, Woo -woo. <laughs> always smiling and having a blast, drinking, smoking, dancing, fucking, and skydiving. Yep, that's baby. So yeah, self-induced as well. I now discovered that many truths exist all at the same time and that means I don't have to tell myself what a total piece of shit I am for calling in sick with the flu when all I really want to do is stay home binge on Netflix and food because I feel so depressed for what I think is no good reason now I know I can say Stace you've been dealing with a lot of suck and it's normal to feel depressed in this current situation look at everything else you've been through look what happens when you withdraw seclude and numb out now remember how alive you felt when you decided to completely overhaul your lifestyle for a happier, healthier you. It is incredible and you were on top of the world. You felt and looked like you were truly happy and alive. And I know you want that really bad for yourself again. I know it is a lot of consistently hard work, but I've seen you achieve it many times over now. I know how badly you want to buy that A&E French onion dip and Lay's ruffled potato chips, too. I also know how you will binge on it while you watch The Tiger King today, but you deserve to treat yourself with a lot more love and respect 
than that because you are totally worth it. So get your ass up out of bed, brush your teeth, drink your Soleil water with your thyroid medication, and get outside for a walk. It's gorgeous out. I really do this. <laughs> then I imagine my desire for that orgasmic food option to be like that other self-destructive phase of my life I call the dirty 30s. Oh boy, it was my early 30s when I decided to turn the tables and began to objectify men for my own sexual retribution. I call that phase within my, within my phase in life my science experiment. Luckily, it didn't last very long because while it was fun in the moment, it was filled with very ugly emotions the next day. I call it my science experiment because I did not expect the outcome it had with regards to men. Men turned into women to me. Like most men I know, men don't cry. Men don't show emotions outside the basic ones. Mine is crying. Crying's for sissies and girls. I tried to hold myself to those standards too, but I'm hypersensitive and I've hated myself for it for a long time. I don't hate myself anymore, but I did until my 40s when I discovered my self-worth. Now I just resent being in perimenopause. I'm working on getting over that too. I have always wanted to be equal to men, always. And rarely has that been the case for me. I began, <laughs> I began to learn that pussy control is a real thing, but that ain't for me. I want to be a genuinely kind person who falls in love with a genuinely kind person that I'm wholeheartedly attracted to and vice versa and be a person who stays as real as possible in this life. I'm an atheist who lives with the motto, what would Jesus do? It keeps me curious and somewhat creative. I'm sorry, and centered. <laughs> I've also learned that we are all liars, but mostly to ourselves, such as calling into work sick when you really are just so depressed, you don't even brush your teeth before face planting into those chips and dip. I would convince myself it was a flu, so I wasn't lying to my boss. I know that depression is legitimately a sickness issue, just as valid as having the flu as a reason for calling in. However, admitting to being depressed is still an unfavorable stigma to it, therefore just defying the lie. What a sad way to support each other and ourselves. We can do better than this for each other and for ourselves. I now try to prevent that oh so gratifying, I'm sorry, I tr now try to pretend that that oh so gratifying French onion dip and chips that explodes in my mouth with such a hearty salty bang is like my science experiment phase. It's crack for me, and while I deeply desire that dopamine rush it provides, I sure do feel twice as shitty on the come down in recovery. I find myself doing the walk of shame, but with food instead of broken men nowadays. The instant gratification is so well named. It's really only for an instant. I say broken men because it takes one to know one. The way I treated some men in my life was extremely narcissistic, and I do feel bad for that, and I'm sorry. I always did the next day, too. I was projecting how, how I had been abused, and the way I thought all men were was certainly not the case. Like an overt narcissist, I attracted soft-hearted, caring men. Some of them were probably giving me the very kind of love I've longed for all my life, but I was too wounded and hateful to see it. Some were also so wounded, they gave me permission to walk all over them. That disgusted me. Therapy helped me see they were only reflecting my very own behaviors. I was them and all my, I was them, the ones that got walked on or allowed to be walked on. I was them in a lot of my past long-term relationships. My disgust for myself grew to the point I had to change or accept that was going to be me. No fucking way is that ever going to be me again. No way. 
That's just gross to me. I also now know that I needed to experience all that so I could break the abusive paradigms that I've learned growing up. It feels like the human race evolves pretty slowly, even psychologically. Boys Will Be Boys is a prime example. That's still prevalent today, and my great-great-grandparents had that mentality. Which reminds me, men need to have their hashtag me too movement time also, ladies. When they are ready to do so, we need to listen, seek to understand, support them being manly, and ask if we can all heal together. If you don't think that they are just as abused, I can assure you I've talked to many women who have used me as their confessional for purposely getting pregnant to trap their boyfriend into marriage. It's jaw-dropping, and that's an enormous violation. It feels so common to me that we're all desensitized to it. I also wholeheartedly think circumcision is truly barbaric and America is being extremely willfully ignorant on the topic. That's most certainly a hashtag me too movement worthy of mention as well. Our men are just as sexually abused as women have been and both genders still are. We all need to listen to each other and help each other heal so we can't so we can change these horrible paradigms before the encroaching addiction pandemic i predict happening within the next couple of years addiction is a son of a bitch to manage once addiction sets in it becomes a part of you for the rest of your life i now see addiction as a symptom of my experiences and a tool i use to cope with those experiences if I open up my life toolbox to pick a tool for any particular situation, I typically make a good choice these days. But when certain fears, anxieties, or past haunts come back to life, I go into what I call Wi-Fi mode. I search and search and search for that quick fix it tool. Lately, it's been food again because I just can't stand how I act when I'm drunk and I don't ever want to smoke cigarettes again. Although I have been craving those lately too. My anxiety is high since I'm barely employed and I have no idea how I'm going to pay my phone bill, car insurance, rent, and still have money for groceries this month. That doesn't count in student loans, gas, monthly girly stuff, etc. I'm broke. <laughs> Which means the much younger me would probably get drunk, manic, and self-destructive to the point I hated myself enough to want to change my ways again. Thankfully, I've learned that life is a constant state of practicing life and to actually love and respect myself better. During times like this, I will actually look myself in the mirror and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the little girl inside of me to let her know, I see her and I have her back. I see her and I have her back. This COVID-19 pandemic has shaken up our entire world on a level I've never experienced. And I certainly do not want, a, uh, I've already survived two near death experiences and I certainly do not want a third one before I'm 90. I've fallen in love with life and I feel the world inviting me to play in it most days. I just don't have the finances to do the things I wanna do. So I want to be as healthy as I can for as long as I can be. I still wanna hike the Grand Canyon, experience the majority of our national forest, go whitewater rafting and so much more. It doesn't take much effort to feel the traumatizing reality of today's current events. And I know from my previous ass kickings that we haven't even seen the worst of it yet. From my experiences with traumatic events, the trauma itself is only a small aspect of the trauma. The aftermath has always been the most devastating for me and the hardest to get through. Then there's the recovery which takes so much work from deep within the soul that many opt out to take themselves out of the game of life. Luckily, the tools I've collected in my life toolbox are pretty happiness promoting these days. I said in the beginning that I thrive in times like this. I feel that I do nowadays because I know what I need to be doing and that's to get my shit together. This ain't the time to be fucking around. It's time to get focused, 
However, I know I'll be getting knocked off my feet quite often in our current reality with the COVID-19 pandemic and with my own struggles with addiction. I just might need a day to myself to mope and say, what the fuck life? But for now, I feel strong and can absorb the continued hits. My body will let me know when that day comes and when it does, I will double check myself so I don't abuse my allowance for it. When I've allowed myself to do this in the past, I come out of the day a new person. It's like giving my body a transmission flush, which my car desperately needs right now too. Ugh. <sighs> Making the guilt and shame stop has been hard for me to do. I still feel it, but not nearly as strong as I used to. I've learned to allow myself to feel them acknowledge that they are there and then push them back to the back of my mind while I push myself to stay present in the now, which typically involves watching movies or documentaries that bring me joy. For some reason, feeling joy makes me bawl my eyes out. I'm talking huge crocodile tears. And if it's an overabundance of joy, add a box of Kleenex to that. What I've discovered is by allowing myself that one day of faking the flu, I offload a shit ton of unrefined energy that I, I feel like I've lost 50 pounds. I feel so much lighter and renewed that the next day I'm a brand new person. I know a lot of people who can relate to this. And if we are a majority, and I sus suspect we are, then I vote we quit hiding behind our mask and we all be more real with ourselves and to each other. If we do that, this world would be a much happier and connected place, and we'd all become healthier people too. As a majority, we could age gracefully together and lead the active lives we prefer. Nowadays, getting old is super depressing due to lack of quality and care. I wanna change those paradigms too. Another deep thought that keeps my mind racing is about all those people who are new to addiction recovery right now. Addiction is a connection issue as well. So connection is a fundamental key to achieving sobriety and maintaining it. I can't even imagine the struggles they are up against right now. Regular support groups is an effective tool and now that tool has changed a lot. Addicts that are new to recovery are experiencing a plethora of huge life changes in a way that it feels like it's all at once. And this COVID-19 pandemic ensues to really make their life chaotic and all the more scary. Ugh. I know for myself, I'm super grateful I didn't have to contend with this when I had to quit smoking five years ago. I have a friend who has been clean now from hard drugs and alcohol for a few years and quit smoking cigarettes about six months ago. Recently, her apartment door was knocked in, kicked in, and a bunch of stuff was stolen. COVID-19 has created enough panic in our nation that some of us have shifted into a survival of the fittest mode already. Not good. My friend and I cried together as I listened to her voice her feelings of grief and loss. She was judging herself quite harshly at times yet staying true to her sobriety. She was bargaining. I remember all too well what that feels like and in no way does a person feel like the superhero they are for themselves in those moments. I hope she now sees what a bad ass she is. She certainly helped me gain the courage to be just as vulnerable to the public with what I speak and write here today. The more I research the impact of COVID-19 and addiction, the more I realize the topic has a wide spectrum to be considered. Because I'm looking for it, I see it everywhere on many levels. I'm intrigued by it and I'm holding my breath a bit with hopes and prayers that my predictions are wrong. I predict addiction will become much more prevalent based on the grocery items that are now hard to find funny self-deprecating memes I see on social media, as well as the comments, admitted decreased physical activity, huge increase in alcohol purchases and chemically fortified processed food products, coupled with the level of trauma many are experiencing 
and the lack of mental health facilities available throughout our nation. It's very alarming to me. These symptoms that I see are perfect for creating an addiction pandemic in addition to our present COVID-19 pandemic. If we don't try to prevent this from occurring, an addiction pandemic will further exacerbate our economy and healthcare systems. We will be killing ourselves through willful, willful ignorance while pointing the finger away from ourselves and still ranting about the government. The government is a mere reflection of our society and our culture in America. There's so much we can all do to help each other through this and mitigate the fallout. And, and we can even start right now. My friend Sherry used to at, ask me when she could see I was feeling overwhelmed. Stace, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. She helped me learn to just start and go from there. The only way out of this is through the suck, which means taking better care of ourselves by boosting our immune system with quality nutrition, getting more outside physical exercise while maintaining six foot distance from other people in the area with less than 10 people, connecting with others more often or often, being kind to one another through compassionate giving getting quality sleep, protecting our minds from overly dramatic news sources and other pandemic-inducing media, and finding gratitude in every day. I'm pretty sure this is just the first round in our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. I predict round two will become a breeding ground of brand new addicts as well. The addiction monster will prey on everyone but it will mostly devour the millennial generation due to trauma caused from personal financial fallout. We also need to remember that our kids will mirror us in their adult life. Let's try our best to not create a future so riddled with anxiety and panic that we continue to die younger every year like we have been the last few years. We truly are all in this together and together we can thrive for a long time. Let's make this a win-win for as much of life as possible. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe to my channel and share it. This is a uh, way for me to feel that I'm helping while helping myself, not just... Um, mentally, but hopefully even eventually, uh, financially. And through that is by watch hours. So if you truly enjoy this and you feel like, um, I'm authentic and the stories are inspiring, please hit that notification button so that you know, when the next podcast is uploaded, I'm definitely going to try to upload by every Saturday um life sure is bumpy right now though just like a heartbeat up down up down so we're kind of in this ride together i i don't want to make any promises but i really really thank you for your time and support and i look forward to next week and if you have any stories to share uh please email dragonfly ginger story at gmail.com thanks and have a great day.